Today, we're going to create a worn out LCD screen shader in Unreal and in Unity. Let's go. All right, we're going to start out in Unity today. And this is the shader that we're going to be creating. If we take a look at the material, you can see that I have this slider here called Screen On. And what this allows me to do is control whether or not the, the LCD screen that we're going to create is on. So as I slide this slider, the screen turns on and the logo animates and then the screen flickers like this. And so we're going to create this effect. And the reason that I chose this one is not only because it's a cool screen, but also that it, it because it's created of several components that you can use for all kinds of things. So I'm hoping that not only can you create a, a cool screen with this tutorial today, but you'll be able to use it as a jumping off point for creating all kinds of other effects that you choose. All right, let's go ahead and create a new shader. So I'm just going to come over here to our shaders folder and pick create shader graph HDRP lit shader graph. Uh, now, the same shader will also work in URP, so don't worry too much about whether we're doing HDRP or URP. And also, we're going to get to the Unreal version in a minute, but we're going to build uh, the Unity version first. So I'm just going to call this Animated Screen, and I'll double-click it, open it up, and we'll jump right in. So the first thing that I want to do is bring in that animated logo. And the way that we're going to animate the logo is with a node called Flipbook. So let's grab a Flipbook node. And here it is. And what this does is it generates UV coordinates to allow us to switch between the frames that are in a texture. And this is a topic that we've already covered extensively on my channel. I'll go ahead and put a link to a previous video where we talked about uh, the Flipbook node uh, right up here. All right, well, let's go ahead and use our Flipbook book UV coordinates to sample a texture. So I'll add a sample texture 2D node and the texture that we're going to create or that we're going to sample is one that I've already created here. It's called animated logo 8x4 and let's just take a look at this texture for a minute. So what we've got here is uh, 32 frames of the animated Unity logo. And it basically goes from small and black to rotated and all the way turned up. And our flipbook node is allow, going to allow us to jump from one frame to the next so that we can smoothly animate this logo. So let's go ahead and plug this into our base color. And now what we need to do is configure the flipbook node. So for the width, this is the number of columns that we have. And so I'm going to say there are eight logos in the column. And for the height, I'm going to give it four uh, because we have four. And now what you see is before when I had this set to one and one, we could see all of them. But when I set it to eight and four, now we can only see the first frame here. Uh, right here because we have told it how many uh, columns and how many rows. And now with this tile input here, I can control which frame is being displayed. So just for now, I'm going to add a slider node and I'm going to make the slider in a range of 0 to 31 because that's the number of frames we have. I'm going to wire that right into tile. And now watch right here in the preview node as I slide the slider, you can see that it's animating through the frames as I scrub this slider here. So that's going to be the basis for the screen effect that we create. Now all we need to do is kind of build up all of the layers of uh, effects around this screen to get the results that we're looking for. The first thing that I want to do to make this look more like an LCD screen is create a pattern of dots uh, because liquid crystal displays uh, are often composed of uh, a little dot pattern. And the way that we're gonna do this is we're gonna create some procedural circles. So we're just gonna set aside our flipbook thing here for now, and we're gonna create some procedural circles. So the first thing that I need is some UV coordinates. 
And in Unity, uh, we bring in a four channel UV set. And I only want the first two channels of our UVs, the X and the Y, or the U and the V. <laughs> and so I'm gonna add a swizzle node and type X, Y here. All right, so that's gonna give me the U and the V coordinate of my UVs. And now the next thing that I need is a fraction node. And I don't actually need this node right now at this stage of the shader, but I'm gonna need it later. So I'm gonna put it in now anyway. So we're gonna add a fraction. And then the next thing that I wanna do is right now my UV coordinates go from zero to one in the vertical and zero to one in the horizontal. And what I actually want to do is center them so that zero is in the middle. This is going to be really important for making our circle. And the way that I'm going to do that is using subtract. So I'm just going to subtract a value of 0 0.5 from both my U and my V. And now you can see I have a value of zero here in the center. And it goes to 0 0.5 and negative 0 0.5 in the horizontal and in the vertical. All right, so the next thing that I need to do in order to make a circle here is I need to find the length uh, from the current pixel that I'm rendering to the center. And so I'm gonna use a length node, and this is gonna take that X and Y value and tell me how far it is to the center. So now you can see that pixels in the center are black because it's a zero distance for them. And the further away that we get from the center, the brighter the color is going to be. But we actually want the opposite of this because we're trying to make a, a white circle, not a black one. And so in order to do that, I need to add a one minus node. And now we can see that our circle is white, bright in the middle, and it gets darker as we move further out uh, toward the edges. All right, and then the last thing that I can do um, just to make this a little bit more like a, a circle is I can raise it to a power. So I'm going to add a power node here and we're going to raise it to a power of eight. And now what we get is a nice smooth gradient from white uh, in the center to black on the edges. And another name for what we've created here is a signed distance field. Um, this is telling us how far it is uh, from the center of the field to the edge. And now that we have a signed distance field, we can use an inverse lerp node to sharpen up the edges. So we basically created this nice pretty gradient. And now we can use inverse lerp to determine or to, to give it some hard edges. So I'm gonna plug this value into the T input of my inverse lerp. And with, with uh, A and B values of zero and one, you can see that I still get the exact same result. But if I wanna sharpen things up here, let's say I give it a value of like 0.6 and a minimum or a maximum value of 0.7. And now you can see I've created my nice little circle here. If I give it a minimum value of like, uh, if I want a really big circle, I can do like 001 and 002. Now I've got a circle that even goes out beyond the boundaries of, of my preview window here. And so now you can see that I'm able to create this circle. And with these input values here for A and B, I can control how big the circle is. Now, what I wanna do is use this animated value that I've created with my flipbook here to control uh, how big my circles are. Um, let's see, before I do that, I want to actually create a whole grid worth of circles, not just one. And so in order to do that, I'm going to take my UV coordinates here and let's just multiply them by 80. And now is the point where it's important that we have this fraction node here. So I'm going to put 80 in here and then we'll pass it into our fraction. And what you can see here is that now our grid is split up into uh, 80 by 80 uh, of these um, of these UV grids. All right, so let's take a look over here. And now you can see um, our circles are actually, we actually have a grid of 80 by 80 circles now. Um, but the issue is that they're a little bit too small for us to see. Um, 
but I think that's going to be okay. Let, let's just tone these down. Maybe we'll do it uh, 30 by 30 just for now, and then we can turn that up again. Now you can see I've got this grid of 30 by 30 circles, and they're a little bit too big right now. Um, let's adjust our inverse lerp values to maybe like 0.1 and 0.2. There we go. Now you can see I've got a nice dot grid. All right, so what I want to do is use the value that I'm getting from my flipbook here to determine uh, the size of my dots. So I think what I'll do is make it so that values that are white make the dots large and values that are black make the dots small. And so I'll just take the output here of my flipbook uh, texture sample. I'm going to add some lerp nodes. We're going to blend between uh, actually, I'm going to plug this into the T value here. We're going to blend between a value of 0.001 and 0.6. And this is going to be the minimum input for my inverse lerp. And they're going to do the same thing. And this is going to be the maximum input. So I'm going to give it a value of 0.002 and a value of 0.7. All right, so this is my minimum and this is my maximum. And we'll move our inverse lerp up here and plug this into A and plug this into B. And so now what you can see I'm doing here is I'm using my flipbook output value to control the size of my dots. So I'm creating kind of like a moray uh, pattern or a um, uh, what do you call it, a halftone pattern where my dots get larger. Um, actually, I did it reverse of what I said I was going to do. My dots are larger when it's black and they're smaller when it's white. And now, uh, as, as almost always when you use an inverse slurp value, I'm going to take this and saturate the result um, because usually with an inverse lerp, we get values that go above one and below zero. So that's what we get with our saturate. And now what we can do when we slide this is we can see, if we look at our saturate node here, you can see our animated pattern and you can see that the animation, let me just move this over here so we can do the slider and see it at the same time. Our animation is controlling the size of those dots in our grid. All right, so we've got our nice animation going on here with um, with our halftone pattern that are that's controlling the size of our dots. I think the next thing that we should do is introduce some color into this. Um, so let's kind of move our nodes over here, and we'll get some color going on. Uh, Old timey LCD screens tended to be kind of a uh, kind of a sickly shade of green. And so I'm going to grab a couple of color nodes here. I've already found some good colors that I like. And what we're going to do is make our screen kind of like this brighter green shade at the top and this kind of more olive green shade down at the bottom. And the way that I can do that is with a UV node. I'll grab our UV coordinates and I'll split this out and we're going to grab the the V coordinate coming out of the green channel here and I'm going to lerp between these two colors so I'll add a lerp node and we're going to um, make it this bright green at the top and this kind of olive green at the bottom using our V coordinate of our UVs here all right, so you can see I've made this kind of gradient thing looking. So it's kind of this uh, olive color and this green color. So this is going to be the background color for our screen. Um, now we want to do the foreground color. Uh, so we'll grab another color value here. I'll put these color values down in the description so you can copy and paste them. Um, or you can take a look at them here. Here's kind of the brighter color green for the background and the kind of olive color green. And then this is gonna be my foreground color here. You can see it's a little bit darker than the other ones. 
And so what I'll do is I'll add another lerp and we're going to lerp between our foreground color and our background color. So I'll plug this color in here. I'll plug this color in here. And then we're going to use the output of our inverse lerp here uh, to blend between the two. Okay, so now you can start to see the background are these larger white dots. And then when the dots get smaller, it shows the background color. So I'm just going to grab this and pull it over here near our slider so that when I slide this, now you can see we've got um, our Unity logo in that darker green and our background in that kind of olive green to brighter green gradient. All right, so this is looking very much like an old timey LCD screen. And we've got this animation going on here. So this is pretty much the core of the effect. And I could stop here if I wanted to, but the thing that I want to do now is introduce um, a bunch of different components that make the screen look more used and worn out. So the first thing that I want to do is create a vignette. I want to make this screen look like it's um, been dimmed with age and it's kind of getting darker around the corners of the screen. So we're going to create a vignette effect. And the way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to take my UV coordinates here. And again, we only need the X and the Y component. So I'm going to add another swizzle and we'll just take our X and Y. And I'm going to add two different passes of X and Y. The first one is going to be inverted. So I'm going to add a one minus node. And then I'm going to add a split. And the second pass is not going to be one minus. They're not going to be inverted. So I'll just add a second split like this. And for both of these, I'm going to multiply the U and the V together with each other. So I'm going to add a multiply here. And we'll multiply the U and V together. And the same thing with this one. Again, I'm going to multiply the U and the V together. And you can see here, I'm getting the, the nice curve in the upper right. And then here, I'm getting the nice curve in the lower left. And so now what I need to do is multiply the two of these together with each other to combine them. And that will give us curves in all four corners. Really nice. Now, uh, this tends, because I'm doing so many multiplies here, it tends to darken things down. And so to fix that, I'm just going to multiply uh, the set of these by something like 20 um, to just kind of compress or to, to bring it back up to where it needs to be. But now you can see I've got these nice rounded corners and it ends up looking like uh, a vignette effect or, or a screen. All right, so I'm just going to go ahead and clean up here, kind of minimize things and condense things down. I like my graphs to be nice and clean and compressed. Some people like to spread their nodes out quite a bit, but my, my graphs tend to be kind of uh, compressed together and clustered in logical groups. All right, so there's our vignette effect. And we can just go ahead and take this and multiply the output by our vignette. All right, and now you can see that I've got my screen with a nice vignette on it. Okay, the next thing that we want to do is make our screen flicker. In order to make it flicker, uh, we need to create some oscillating brightness effects. So in order to do that, um, I'm just going to come down here. Let's see, I'm going to group this together a little bit better. This is the set of nodes that creates our dots and I'll just come down here underneath it to create our brightness flicker. Now in order to, to create flicker we're going to need a time node and we're going to pass time through a couple of sine waves. So I'm going to add a sine and I'm just going to make three of these and we're going to pass time going at different speeds. So I'm going to multiply time by 15 for this one and by three for this one 
and then by 1.37 for this one. So you can see I've got three octaves of time. So I've got time going at different speeds here, and I'm going to pass these into my sine waves. And then we're going to combine these together. And the result of combining these sine waves together that are uh, that have different wavelengths. So here you can see this one um, blinking on and off at a speed of 15. And we're going to add it together with this one that's blinking on and off at a speed of 3. And you can see there's a little bit of irregularity there happening. And then when I introduce the third one, I'm going to get even more irregularity. And this is just going to create a little bit of chaos. The point is I'm trying to set up a pattern that's not constantly going at the same tempo. Um, but because I'm doing these sine waves and adding them together for three different speeds, I'm getting this result that um, is kind of fighting with itself and doing this sort of irregular uh, speed pattern. And now what I can do is I'm going to saturate the result. And now I just want to kind of um, control the range of it. So I'm going to add a lerp node here and connect my input to the T. And I want it to oscillate between 1 and 0 0.7. So basically, and then I can use this value as a multiplier for the brightness of my screen. So you can see that um, I'm getting a value somewhere between 0 0.7 and 1. And if I multiply my output result here by that, I can get a screen that kind of flickers as it would uh, if it had, you know, kind of worn out electronics inside. So I'm going to come up here to my LERP node and add another multiply right here. And I'm going to multiply this by my brightness flicker. Now you can see I've got this screen that's kind of uh, dimming and brightening uh, in an irregular way. All right, and then I'll pass that into my vignette. And now I've got this nice uh, flickering screen effect going on. All right, now I'm going to spend some time just kind of tidying things up here. Going to make sure that, that we have things well organized so that we can understand what's happening and what parts are doing what. So I'm going to come up here and we'll group these together. And I'm going to call these my vignette. And I'll group these and call them color. And then I'll group these and I'm going to call them dot grid and I'm going to group these and we're going to call them brightness flicker and then we'll move our master stack over and we'll output the color and we're also going to output the emission. All right, so we have a pretty clean looking shader here. The last thing that I want to actually there are two more things that I want to do. I want to create the turning on effect and I want to create some sizzle. If we look here, you can see that the the screen is kind of humming along with this um, with this brightness dimming effect. But I want to create the effect of scan lines as though there, there are some internal electronics of this thing that are kind of worn out. I don't know if you've noticed, but as we've been going along here, we're just kind of layering up effects that are making things look less and less perfect. We have our vignette effect here. Uh, we have our our gradient here with the different shades of green. We have our dots and we have our brightness flicker. We're doing lots of work to make things feel uh, more worn out and, and more um, kind of old. Like, you know, uh, the, the electronics inside the mechanism are, uh, you know, getting grime and dust and maybe the capac capacitors are wearing out, that sort of thing. The next thing that we're going to do is create some sizzle lines. And um, so in order to create the sizzle lines, I'm going to start out with here with my UV coordinates. And I'm going to split and use just the uh, green channel here. And we're going to combine, combine this with a vector 2. And what we're creating is some inputs for uh, the random range node. So here, let's let's put down our random range node, and this is going to give us some random values in the 
x coordinate of our input for random range, I'm using the y of our uv coordinates. That's going to give us the lines. And then in the in the y coordinate here, we're going to use time. And giving it time is going to kind of scramble things up. So what I'm saying is in the y coordinate over time uh, scramble things up a bunch so i'm going to pass this into our random range and bingo now we've got some crazy looking lines but if i use these as they are uh, we're going to get an effect that's a little bit too strong so i'm going to go in here and tone this range down so i'm only going to be fluctuating between negative 0.1 and positive 0.1 so my effect is just a little bit less strong here. Okay, and now I'm gonna use these to kind of mess up our dot grid. So I've got my random range lines, and what I wanna do is right here, after I multiply and create a grid of 30, I'm just gonna add these random lines in here. So I'm gonna wire down here, create an add node, and then pass this in here. So the UVs for my dot grid are gonna be kind of uh, messed up uh, by these scan lines here. All right, and so now if we come over to the preview, you can see that instead of these uniform static dots, I now have kind of these sizzly flickering dots, uh, which is exactly the effect that I was going for. And if we look at the effect uh, near the end, near the end, you can see that I have my brightness flicker, but I also have my uh, dots flickering uh, because they're getting messed up by these sizzle lines here. All right, and again, if I take my slider here that's controlling what frame of the animation I'm on, I can scrub through this and animate my effect so that the screen moves and animates. That's pretty cool. All right, there's one more thing that we wanna do, and that is we want to be able to make it so that our screen can turn on and off. And in order to turn on, we want it to, to be black at the beginning, and then to kind of expand out from the center and get bright in the center first, and then um, uh, bright on the edges at the end. So in order to do that, we're gonna take our slider here, which basically represents time, and we're going to create a mask that expands out, starts out white in the center and expands out. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to change my time slider instead of zero to 31, uh, selecting the frames here, I'm going to set it to a range of zero to one. And then for the frames themselves, I'm just going to go ahead and add a, a multiply node. And we're just going to multiply this by 31 so that we end up with a value of 31 over here. So I'm gonna pass this into my flipbook node. And now what you'll see is as I slide this, I'm still getting the same results over here. Uh, I just changed the range of my slider and took that 31x multiply out of there and added it here separately. So now I can use my slider uh, to create the uh, the kind of expanding out from the middle and turning on effect. All right, so the way that we're gonna do this is we're gonna take this value and we're gonna multiply by two and then we're gonna saturate it. And the reason that we're doing this is because we want the first half of the slider range to be the turning on effect and the second half of the slider range to be the animated logo effect. So when I multiply by two and then saturate, this is isolating the first half of the range. It basically is going from zero to one in the first half of the range of the slider. Now I'm gonna invert it by using one minus, and we're gonna leave that there for a minute. And now I need to create um, the effect with the UVs. And so I'm gonna grab, uh, actually I need the, um, the V coordinate here. So I'm gonna grab this one. And we need to center it, so we're gonna add, we're gonna subtract uh, 0 0.5. So now you can see I've got my V coordinate right there in the center, and it goes from 0 to 0 0.5 and 0 to negative 0.5 here. 
And we actually want it to go to zero from zero to one. And so we're going to multiply it by two. So now we have a good range. And now if I add an absolute node, now you can see it goes from zero to one here and zero to one there and it's zero in the middle. And we actually want the opposite of that. So I'm going to add one minus. And now I've got this nice, just like we did with the circles, I have a nice signed distance field that goes from one to zero, uh, starting with one in the middle and going to zero on the edges. And now I can use our sign distance field and an inverse lerp node again to animate myself through this gradient of values. And that's how we're gonna create the uh, turning on effect. So there's my sign distance field. I need to add an inverse lerp node here using the sign distance field as the input. And now I just need to control the max or the minimum and the maximum values to animate through this gradient. So I'm going to take my one minus value here and plug that into the minimum. And then for my offset for my maximum, I'm just going to take my one minus value here and we're going to add a value of like 0 0.02 um, just to offset this a little bit. All right, so now, now we've got a value that's completely on, but let's take our slider here and animate through the effect. All right, sweet. So you can see the first half of the slider we're going from black and then sliding up. And then the second half we're not using because we're going to use the second half for animating the logo. All right, cool. So you can see I used these, um, I used our UV coordinates, our V coordinates specifically. And then I created a sign distance field out of it. And then using our inverse slurp node, I made it able to animate through those values to get uh, this kind of sliding vertical screen door effect. Okay, so now I can just take the result of that and multiply it in at the end. Uh, actually, we're gonna multiply it in right before our vignette. So I'm just gonna scoot our vignette value over here and we can add another multiply and we're going to multiply this by our screen door effect so that we can turn on the screen. So I'll take the output of my inverse slurp. Ah, and I forgot, but as I said, almost always you're gonna to want to saturate the result of inverse slurp. So we'll take the result of that, connect it up over here to our multiply, and uh, everything's gone black. And why is that? Well, it's because our slider here is set to zero and at zero, our screen is off. But if we slide our slider, you can see here our screen is turning on. Now, one thing that we haven't done yet is you can see that the animation is playing at the same time as the screen is turning on. So we need to delay our animation so that it the screen turns on for the first half of the slider and then the animation plays for the second half. So let's do that. And that'll be the last thing that we need to do in, able to, in order to complete our effect. So we're gonna take our slider value here and we're gonna subtract 0 0.5 and then we're gonna multiply by two and then saturate. And what this is going to do is it's going to shift our zero to one range over uh, so that we only get the animation happening in the second half of the effect. So we'll wire this into our flipbook node. And then let's grab our slider and bring it over here and zoom in. Now when we do our slider, you can see that the screen is turning on for the first half of the range and then the animation plays for the second half of the range. Okay, cool. So now if I were gonna um, create
create a material out of this so that it would be usable for the game, what I want to do is instead of this slider, I could open up the blackboard here and expose a control that was called screen on. So now instead of using this slider, which this is super useful for testing things in real time as I'm creating the shader graph. But now that I've got it done, I want to replace it with this value here that's exposed so that I can uh, adjust this slider uh, in the material and I could connect logic uh, to it in the game so that when the player pressed a button, the screen would turn on or you know something else happened in the game, I can control this exposed parameter. So if we switch over to our scene, you can see I've got my screen here and it's got our dot pattern it's got our logo, it's got our flickering happening. And if I select my material here, I can change the value of the screen on, just like I did at the beginning, to turn on the screen and then animate the logo. All right, pretty cool. Let's go ahead and switch over to Unreal and I'll show you how to do the same thing there. All right, here we are in Unreal and you can see that in my scene, I've got uh, the same kind of screen Obviously, it wouldn't do to have the Unity logo on the uh, Unreal version, so I, I made a flipbook animation that has the Unreal logo instead. And you can see that uh, this is what my Unreal logo looks like. Uh, in fact, let's change our shader really quickly to animate the logo. Right now, I just have a static value on it, and it's set to 0 0.99, so this is the end of the animation. Um, but if I switch this out and set it to time, uh, what we're going to see is our screen turns on and then the logo animates, just like we did in Unity. Uh, pretty cool. Actually, let's slow this down a little bit. Let's add a multiply here. And we're going to multiply this by 0.1 just to slow time down so we can see our effect happening over time. Okay, so our screen turns on and then our Unity logo animates. And that's that. In Unreal, we don't have a nice convenient slider node here to be able to show the animation in the actual uh, material editor, um, but probably could expose the slider as a parameter uh, in a material instance uh, so that I could do the same result out here uh, in the actual scene. Okay, but you can see that I've created the exact same shader here uh, and it's doing all the exact same behaviors. Let's go ahead and take a look at how the shader works. So right at the heart of the shader, I have the flipbook node. And the flipbook node is set up with uh, four rows and eight columns. You can see here, so it says the number of rows is four and the number of columns is eight. And I got those values here. So I have eight columns and four rows of uh, frames in my atlas texture here and then beside that I need uh, my texture plugged in so there's my texture object with the, the texture and then I have to define the animation phase and the animation phase comes from time all right the next thing that we have just like we had in unity I'm creating a dot grid now I take my texture coordinates here and I'm multiplying them by 80. I think in Unity I maybe had a lower number, maybe something like 30. Uh, that's going to make our grid a little bit uh, lower resolution. <laughs> maybe we'll stick with 80. All right, I multiply my uh, texture coordinates by 80. Uh, let's just ignore this add for now because that's the part that's doing the sizzle lines. We'll skip that and come back to it. So I plug that into a frac. I subtract 0.5 to center it, and then I measure the length uh, to get the measure to get the distance from the center to whatever picture I'm, uh, pixel I'm currently rendering. And then I do one minus to flip that around, and then I raise it to a power of eight, and this is giving me my nice grid of dots. So then I come up here to my flipbook node. And this is actually giving me a signed distance field. And so I need to use my inverse lerp node here to convert my signed distance field into uh, circles. 
And so in order to do that, I'm taking the output of my flipbook node, and then I'm lerping between 0 0.001 and 0.6, and 0 0.002 and 0.7. And these are becoming the min and max values of my inverse lerp. So I've got 0 0.001 and 0 0.6 as my minimum or my A input and 0 0.002 and 0 0.7 as my B input. And then for my input value, I'm using the results of my sine distance field dot grid. Okay, and then I saturate the result here. Now, in order to introduce some color, I have a kind of a brighter green value and an olive green value and I'm blending between those based on the V coordinate of my UV. So there are my texture coordinates. I'm masking out the G uh, using a component mask. And then I come down here and I blend between my brighter green and my more olive green, which creates kind of a gradient from top to bottom between those two greens. And then I have a little bit uh, darker value green here and I'm blending between my green gradient and my darker green based on this uh, signed distance field input here. And so this darker green is what you see in the, the logo and the letters of the uh, Unreal Engine here. And then the, the lighter green is what I'm using for the background of the screen. So I'm using that lerp there and so that gives me uh, my flipbook animation, my color, and my dot grid. All right, and then the next thing that I have here is my vignette. So in order to create a vignette, I'm starting out with my texture coordinates. And I have two different uh, channels going on here. I have the um, top right corner and the lower left corner. So I've using the one minus to create one channel and not using the one minus to create the other one. So I take the U and the V and multiply them together here. And again, the U and the V and multiply them together here. Then I multiply the results. And it's kind of dim, but what you can see is that I've got this nice image with kind of bright in the middle and dim around the corners. And then I just multiply it by 20 to, to kind of uh, get it back up to the range where I needed it to be because doing all these multiplies kind of dims things down. All right, so then I've got my nice vignette effect and I can multiply that in here at the end. All right, the next thing that I want to show is the brightness flicker because you can see the screen is kind of flickering uh, dimmer and brighter there. And the way that I do that is I take time and I multiply it by three different speeds, by 15, by three, and by 1.37. And then I pass those into sine waves. Now, one thing that's important to know about sine waves in Unreal is if you want the sine node to behave like a standard mathematical sine operation, you need to select your sine node and come over here to the period part and give it a period of 6.2 um, because this will allow the sign to have the full uh, 360 degree coverage uh, in radiance. Uh, so I give it a value of 6.2 there for all three of my sign nodes. So I'm multiplying one time by 15 here, time by three here, time by 1.37 here, and then passing all of those into the sign node. And then I'm adding the results together. Now individually, each of these sine nodes is just going to give me a standard like rhythmic pulse. But because I'm adding them together and they're each going at kind of a different random speed, the result of what I'm getting there is like a much less predictable, something that doesn't cycle in a regular pattern uh, because of these different values that I've added together, sine waves going at different rates. So I add the three sine waves together, saturate the result, and then I clamp the results that I'm getting um, between one and 0 0.7 using this lerp node here. So what this is giving me uh, in the end is a multiplier 
that goes from 0.7 to 1, and then I can multiply my result by that, and what I'll get is a screen that does this like flickered uh, dimming here that you're seeing. So I take the result of that lerp, and then come on back up here and just multiply my results by that. Okay, let's take a look at the sizzling that's happening because you can see I've got my dot pattern here, um, but it's not a constant dot pattern, it's kind of jiggling. And the part that is doing that is right down here uh, where it says sizzle lines. So in order to generate these sizzle lines, I'm taking the V coordinate of my texture coordinates um, by using this component mask. So here are my texture coordinates, come down here, um, and I'm using this append many uh, node, and I pass my U coordinate, or my V coordinate of my UVs in, and then I pass time in as my second component. And now I'm passing in this uh, third component, which is just a value of zero. I don't really need this component here, but what I'm doing is I'm using this noise node here and it has to take in a vector three. So I need three components. Um, so that's why I'm using this append many here and I'm giving it red, green, and blue and RGB to pass in. But I'm really only using the first two, the red and green. Uh, but because my noise uh, requires a vec three as an input, I have to use append many. All right, so for my noise here, I've got the scale set to 300. I've got the value or the function set to computational value noise and the levels I have set to one. Now this is pretty critical here to set levels to one. Um, noise is fairly mathematically complex to calculate and anything higher than one, you're gonna be doing a lot more math than you actually need. So I'm just setting my levels to one and then I'm clamping my output between negative 0.2 and positive 0.2 um, just to kind of tone that down a little bit. All right, and then you can see the output of my noise is these kind of random streaky lines. Now with those random streaky lines, I can take the result there and add them to the coordinates that I'm using to generate my dot grid. And you can see the result is you know, I'm not getting a nice uniform dot grid anymore. I'm getting a dot grid that is chopped up a lot uh, by these sizzle lines. Okay, I think that's everything except for the screen on effect. Uh, why don't we just go ahead and skip screen on for now. I'm just going to bypass that part of our effect and take a look at what it looks like um, without doing screen on. All right, so you can see I've got my nice Unreal logo animation here. I've got my flickering dot grid with a vignette. But what screen on is gonna do for me is make it so the screen looks like it's turning on and kind of animating out, uh, turning on in the center first and then an animating out toward the edges. So let's put that back in. Right, so I start in the middle and grow toward the edges and then animate my logo. Now, the way that I do that is I take my uh, time that's happening here and I multiply it by two and saturate and that isolates just the first half of the time because that's when the screen on effect is taking place. And now I take my UV coordinates and I'm just grabbing the V coordinate here using a component mask node. So I've got just the, just the second component there. So there is my gradient that goes from zero to one and I subtract 0.5 to center it in the middle and then I multiply by two so that instead of just going from zero to 0 0.5, now it goes from zero to one and zero to negative one. Then I use an absolute node so that it's going positive in both directions. It's going from zero to one and zero to one the other direction. 
and then I use one minus to flip it. And now I have a nice signed distance field that goes from zero to one and then back to zero again in this vertical axis. So now that I have a signed distance field, I can use my inverse lerp node here to control uh, where my fall off is happening. So for my minimum of inverse lerp, I use this input. And then for my maximum, I just add 0 0.2. And so the result of this is going to be a mask that animates just like you're seeing over here in the preview. And then uh, I need to saturate the output of my inverse lerp. And then I can come back over here and multiply it. And that's what creates the kind of the screen door effect here. All right, so that is my effect. And you can see here in my scene, I've got my worn out LCD screen uh, with my animated Unreal logo. All right, I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. And I hope you can see that this effect is cool not only by itself, but also because there are so many individual components here. We figured out how to do this kind of screen on effect where we're animating uh, starting in the middle and fading out toward the edges. And we learned how to do this vignette effect, which makes our screen uh, dimmer around the edges. Uh, we learned how to do this nice dot grid assigned distance fields. We learned how to do this flicker. You can see there's a whole bunch of individual components here, and all of these could be used for other things on their own or combined and mixed and matched in different ways. I hope these uh, these techniques are you know valuable tools in your shader toolkit and that going forward you not only know how to create this crazy animated UV or animated flickering LCD screen, uh, but you can also take these individual components and use them for other projects that you work on. Anyway, that'll be all for today. Uh, tune in next week and we'll do some more uh, cool shader effects. Thanks for watching, everybody.